I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this particular video, we'll see how do we solve all these 12 questions one by one. These are based on quadratic equations. Let me thank all viewers and subscribers for contributing and supporting our channel. This video is being made on request of parents. As far as I think, they want to guide their own kids. And education, as you know, is most expensive these days. Many cannot afford it. Well, here is your channel where you can make a request and we make video absolutely free for you. So let me also tell you that we have been there for last 15 years providing free videos. 17,000 of such videos are there on my channel already. More than 80 countries are participating in learning. We want to reach millions. Well, the service is free, but as you know, if you can contribute a little bit, you should so that others can get the benefit who desperately need this information. Even small values like 10, 15, 20 dollars matters. Every dollar counts. And if you are sincerely looking into regular support of our passion, you may send an email on the address given globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. We can do a lot for you. And we are actually trying to reach people, I should say students, in remote areas, including tribal areas. We really need your support to make education available, quality education, available to most absolutely free thank you now let's look into our questions once again so the idea of making this video is also to support parents as you know education is very very expensive you can learn a bit from this particular video and my channel and teach or guide your own kids so we'll start learning how do we solve quadratic equations. I have taken very, very simple examples to begin with, but we are going to solve very complicated questions at the end of this video, right? It should not take long for you to go through, right? Now, simple equation x squared equals to 1, most can solve, then we'll get to some factored form, and then we'll look into more complicated ones. So once again, in case uh, you really like my videos, at least put some likes and comments. I don't see anything coming there, right? Just few hundreds of hits are not very encouraging to be very frank with you. Anyway, let's now look into it. How do we solve these questions? Learn the techniques, right? Before we begin, let me give you some basic concept and then we'll run through these solutions. As you know, squares of numbers is always positive. So if you take a number, whether it is plus 2 or minus 2, square will be positive, right? So that's what we are trying to say, that squares of all the numbers, whether they are positive or negative, will always be greater than 0, right? So when we work with squares, we have to square them. Negative numbers also become positive, right? Negative 5 square will be 25. Square root is the reverse operation which helps us to get the solution. So look at it. If I want to find square root of 4 reverse operation, then we know that the solution could be either plus 2 or minus 2. We have two solutions. So do not really write only plus 2 as your answer as then the answer is incorrect. So keep that in mind. 
uh, and that's the first thing as a caution now let's begin with the solutions so in every page i've taken two of our questions first one very simple x square equals to one so what is x equals to x will be you do the reverse operation right so square means you have to square root it so you square root both of them and when you square root you do not forget to write both plus and minus one right so what we get here is x is equal to plus or minus one it has two solutions clear now let's take the next question which is x square minus 7 square is equal to 0. We can take 7 square to the other side and write it as x square equals to 7 square. Now, let us do square root on both the sides. Right? So, we are doing this square root here and square root there. Now, what do we get? Well, square root of x square is always positive. Remember that part, right? And this is also positive. So, we get x is equal to 7. So, see here we get x as square root of 7. However, if I would put x as minus 7, then also I will get positive 7. You get the idea because this is square root of 49, right? Square root of 49 is 7. However, square, square root is not x. So, let me just tell you, it is either positive or negative. So, we write this square root of x square as absolute value of x. It could be positive or negative and then we get our answer that x is equal to plus or minus 7. You get the idea, right? So, when you are working with x square, here also, when I did square root on both the sides, I actually did plus and minus purposely on the right side to give you both the concepts separately. So, remember one thing that square root of x square indeed is absolute value of x and absolute value of x could have both positive and negative values right so we have two answers once again which is plus and minus 7 you can see if i put minus 7 here for x i will get minus 7 square which is also 49 and 49 minus 49 is 0 it works correct let's move on to Question number 3 and 4 now. So, now this time I have numbers on both the sides. So, we can now rearrange. We have x square minus 3 equals to 13. We will rearrange and write x square equals to 13 plus 3, right, which indeed is 16. And therefore, x will be, you could square root and write plus and minus, right, both the signs, giving two answers as we were expecting as plus and minus 4, clear? Now, here is the next question, which is x square plus 4 is equal to 1. Now, when I take 4 on the other side, I get 1 minus 4, which is minus 3. Now, can x square be negative? x square is always positive, right? We know x square is always positive, so there is no solution existing. Some of you can try writing plus minus square root of minus 3. But then minus 3 square does not exist. So we have no solution here, right? You understand. No solution. You could give a reason here also that x square is always positive, right? So x square is always greater than or equal to 0. It is non-negative. So if you have negative number on the right hand side, then we do not have solution of the equation. Is that clear to you? Let's move forward. Take up question number 5 and 6 now. Slightly more complicated this time. We are taking variables also on both the sides. So we can write 3x square. Let's copy the question first, right? And then we'll work it out. Write the variables on one side. That is the common practice and the numbers on the other. So we get 4x square on the left side combining the like terms and 9 on the other side. x square is 9 over 4. So, what is x equals to? Plus and minus. Before you do square root, write plus and minus and then 9 over 4 and clearly it is plus and minus 3 over 2. That is how you are going to solve this question. So, we are picking up pace. I, I hope you are there with me. You can always pause the video, answer yourself and if you really like my videos, 
you can always subscribe to them and so you'll get new videos every time we post we post a video every day right great and in case you want to learn directly from us you can send an email on the address given many teachers and many parents are uh, coming to us uh, with learning new techniques of how do we teach kids right uh, let me also share with you that my grandchildren are learning and now uh, you can see some of their videos how they are progressing great let's now move on to the next question which is two times 2x square minus 1 equals to x square plus 25. Now we can apply the distributive property, open the bracket, getting 4x square minus 2 equals to x square plus 25. Do you see how we are complicating uh, these questions slightly so that you keep on understanding the concepts, apply your strategies and master them. So we'll again bring the like terms which are x square in this case to the left and the numbers on the right. So we get 25 plus 2 on the right hand side. 3x squared on the left is equal to 27. Dividing by 3, we can write x squared equals to 27 divided by 3, which is 9, and x is equal to plus minus square root of 9, which is 3. You see, that is how we could solve this question. Simple steps. Just keep on focus and you will get them all very easily. Now here is the next two questions. We have x minus 1 whole square equals to 9. So let me rewrite this. x minus 1 whole square equals to 9. When you square root, we get x minus 1 equals to plus minus square root of 9, which is plus minus 3. Clear? So far, so good, right? Now, what is x equals to? Well, at this stage, we can do x is equal to 1 plus minus 3. So you see we are getting two solutions. One with 1 plus 3. The other one, 1 minus 3. So if I add 3, I get 4. And if I subtract, I get minus 2. So we have two solutions, x equals to 4 or minus 2. Prefer to write minus 2 before 4, right? I didn't do it this time. But you take up the tips which I am giving you and do the right way, right? Perfect. The next question here is x plus 2 whole square minus 1 equals to 0. Take 1 on the other side, right? So use this technique, right? Numbers on the right hand side, squares or variables on the left hand side. Not definitely. I'm going to do square root. And as I do x square root, I will do plus and minus of 1, which is plus minus 1. And simply x equal to minus 2 this time plus minus 1 and that also gives me two solutions one being minus 2 plus 1 the other one minus 2 minus 1 and therefore our answer here is that x is equals to minus 2 plus 1 which is minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 which is minus 3 is that clear to you right so now we are in last four questions which could be slightly difficult well they're not really difficult but we've changed our strategy a bit we are giving you the quadratic equation in a different form and that is called the factored form, right? So this is the factored form. Most of the time, we have to factor a quadratic equation to get the answer. How do we factor is a part of another video which you can go through and understand how do we get to this form. Very critical, correct? I hope you are enjoying this journey. Feel free to write a comment, share your views. If you want to learn from me, send an email to me right great great and then don't forget to contribute right let's continue so we have this particular equation which is x plus 3 times x minus 5 equals to 0 now when you are multiplying two numbers and getting 0 it really means that either one of them could be 0 and that leads us to the two possible solutions clear so we could say this is possible if x plus 3 equals to 0. That will give me the value of x as minus 3. Or we could have x minus 5 equals to 0. That means x is equal to 5. And so we have two solutions here that x could be minus 3 or 5. Makes sense? Perfect. So that is how we are going to do it. Now let's move on and take up the next question. 
Really, you should stop the video at the stage. Answer this particular question, correct? So we have this, uh, which is 2x minus 7 times 3x plus 2 equals to 0. Equate each one of them, right? So equate each one of them to 0. Write down your answer. So we get 2x minus 7 equals to 0 means x is equals to 7 over 2. And here we have 3x plus 2 equals to 0 means x is equals to minus 2 over 3. So again, we get these two solutions. You can substitute them back in the equation and verify the result. Perfect. Great. Let's move on to the last two questions, which are x square minus 9 times x square minus 3 equals to 0 and a similar one, question number 12. So let's try to see how do we solve them. So question number 11 is x square minus 9 times x square minus 3 equals to 0. So here, if I equate x square minus 9 equals to 0, I'll get one set of solutions. And then x square minus 3 equals to 0 will give me another set of solutions. So let's do it. So x square is equal to 9. x is equal to plus minus square root of 9. So that gives me x as plus minus 3. On the right hand side, we have x square equals to 3. So x is equal to plus minus square root of 3. See, in quadratic equations, we can get radicals as our answer, right? Here, in this particular example, almost at the end, we have a similar case. So there are some special cases which I am going to take up in my next set of videos, right? So here, we get two answers and definitely x could be either plus or minus square root 3. Make sense? Let's do the last question now, which is 2 times x square minus 1 times x square plus 4, right? How many solutions do you expect for this particular equation? Last one gave us 4 solutions, right? Plus minus 3 and plus minus root 3. Now let's check what type of answers do we get now, right? So let's do it. We have 2 times x square minus 1 equal to 0. That is possible. Or we could do x square plus 4 equals to 0. Let's do the first one. This really means that x square minus 1 should be 0, right? x square equals to 1, x equals to plus minus square root of 1, or x equals to plus minus 1. Clear. We have done this many times before now. Right. Now, x square equals to minus 4. As you know, square cannot be negative. So, there is no solution for this part of the factor, right? Correct. So, in this case, we only have two solutions, which is x equals to plus or minus 1. Do you get the idea? So, that brings us to the end of the solution of all the 12 questions. I hope you have understood the strategy. And you can always send me an email for further guidance, right? And if possible, try to contribute. You Those in Canada can directly send money with the email. Those elsewhere can contact me and we can have uh, some arrangements to receive your funding and help many others globally. Thanks a lot for joining our classes and the lectures and I hope they definitely bring some value to your time. Thank you and all the best.